Wednesday evening uh, prayer meeting, our discipleship time, and as we have our time of corporate prayer, and then our time of devotion from God's Word, and then we enter into a time of intentional prayer, let us prepare ourselves to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we are thankful for this midweek meeting, this time of gathering and coming together. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless our time together tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, if you have a prayer request or if you have a praise, if you would please raise your hand and the microphones will come to you. Anybody that might have a praise or a prayer request. Let me start. There, um, there was an evangelist whose name is Wade Morris. I believe that's right. Um, he got COVID, and um, he actually passed away a couple of days ago. So, if we could just remember Wade Morris' family, leave him a wife and and children, and there are many many lives that he touched. Um, many had come to Christ under his evangelism ministry and under his youth ministry. He had gone to countless youth events and um, spoke and just many that, that um, had come to Christ under him. So if we could just pray for his, his wife and his children. Also, my friend Brian Robertson um, has COVID. He's a pastor in Florida and uh, spoke with him today and, um, and just leaving the hospital with um, just taking medication for pneumonia and he's just really going through it. So if you would just continue to pray for him as well um, and just, uh, just all of those on our prayer list as well, we want to remember in our prayers, um, pray for, continue to pray for Randy Carty. Um, spoke with Donna today, and um, he, uh, he went to the doctor, and he's going to go back next week and, and see them again. So just, just continue to pray for him as, as, um, as his eyes get better and the swelling goes down, and, and he's able to return to some of his activities. Anybody else tonight? Prayer request, praise. All right, we're going to go into um, time of corporate prayer. I'm going to ask Randy if you'll please lead us in prayer. Remember our prayer list, Randy, and just the requests that have been mentioned. Super Sunday coming up, September the 12th. Pray for Brother Chad. And I pray God you'd give him a message that would prick our hearts to help us to realize that there is a lost world out there. And God, help us to share your Son and our Savior with that lost world. Lord, I pray for these two prayer requests. Pastor Josh made aware to us. I pray for that family in Florida. 
God, I, I pray for the other pastors. Man. I just pray, God, that you would just, uh, your will be done in, in their lives. And God, that they would look to you and you put your loving arms around them. Lord, now as we have a devotion and a time of prayer for our Super Saturday and the church and other activities that we have in our church, pray for you. God, as we're meeting in this door, God, I just thank you for Justin and his ministry here. I just pray, God, you continue to lead him. God, I pray for our music search committee. I just pray, God, that you have that person out there that you want to lead our worship service and, and music, and you would guide them to him, her, and they would come on board and, and worship you. Now, Lord, just take control of this service. Help us to share Jesus tomorrow as we go and wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take your Bibles tonight and turn with me to Daniel chapter 6. We shall give attention tonight to verse 10 through verse 12. I want to tell you what happened to me today. I was on the doodle trail on the picking side and hadn't been able to run in a while because I've been sick and just haven't had the energy to do it. And this afternoon I was, I was on the trail um, making a bad attempt at running, um, more like a, a jog and a walk combination. Um, but if you've ever been on the doodle trail on Pickens, you'll know it's a, it's a paved trail. And, and to the side there's a road. And so you always hear cars, but today I heard a car that sounded like it was awful close. And I thought, well, yeah, but the road's right beside me, so um, that's probably what it is. And really wasn't thinking too much about detail, wasn't thinking too much about uh, how close that car could be. But the sound kept getting more familiar and the sound kept getting louder. When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I saw a car running through the trail that I'm on where no motor vehicles are supposed to be on. Somebody had not been as observant as I've been on this trail, and they ended up on the trail with their car coming through with bikes and with, and with um, joggers and walkers and runners and all kinds of people really dangerous situation. You know, when we come to the Word of God, sometimes we come to a text and we don't pay attention to the detail. We don't pay attention to uh, just the real unique detail that is set up in the passage. And I think when we look at Daniel's prayer life and when we look at specifically these verses dealing with Daniel praying, there's some things uh, that we miss. And I want to point out five things tonight that I see as Daniel prays. So we're going to go ahead and read the text, and we're going to have to do some background because we're jumping into chapter 6 of a book we have not studied. But let's go ahead and look tonight at Daniel 6 and verse 10 through verse 12. And we're going to pay close attention to the details of Daniel's prayer life here outlined in in this passage. When Daniel learned that the document had been signed, he went into his house. The windows in its upstairs room opened toward Jerusalem. And three times a day, he got down on his knees, prayed, and gave thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Now, don't miss that, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group, found Daniel petitioning and imploring his God. So they approached the king and asked about his edict. Didn't you sign an edict that for 30 days any person who petitions any God or man except you, the king, will be thrown into the lion's den. 
The king answered, as a law of the Medes and Persians, the order stands and is irrevocable. So when we think about the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel to the Old Testament is what the book of Revelation is to the New Testament. And if we're looking at the history of this prophetic book, Daniel and his friends at a very young age, some believe about 12 years old, some some even speculate younger than that, they are besieged and they are taken to Babylon. They are given um, names after Babylonian gods and they are told and and, um, and forced at one point to even eat foods that are um, given to these gods. Now, we know from the book of Daniel, if you know the book of Daniel at all, you know that Daniel refused, his friends refused to eat those foods. And they actually made a deal. And they said, we'll look better than those eating those foods if you allow us to eat what's in our custom to eat. And we know that they did look better than those that were eating the king's food. As the book of Daniel unfolds, we see that Daniel has this gift of dream interpretation. And it comes to pass where the king has a specific dream. And he gathers up all of his cronies. He gathers up all of his men. And they're used to being able to hear the dream and then tell the king what the dream means. But this time the king says, no, 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 it's not gonna work that way. Here's what I want. I want you to tell me the dream and I want you to explain to me what the dream means. Now, this is something they were not used to and they could not phony their way through this interpretation. And the king said, if you don't do it, I'm gonna chop you up into pieces. I'm going to kill you. And it came to be that Daniel could not only interpret the dream, he could tell the king what he dreamed as well as interpreting the dream. How do you think this made the officials, the satraps, the, all of the cronies of the king look that this Daniel, this Israelite, Uh, could interpret the dream that they couldn't interpret. So they thought to themselves, how is it that we can really punish Daniel? How is it that we can really get to him? How is it that that we can really, really bring it to Daniel? And they began to realize this man is an upright man. This is a man that loves God. This is a man that's blameless before God. This is a man that fears nothing other than sin and disappointing God. So if we really want to stop Daniel, if we really want to sock it to Daniel, we need to take his faith away from him. We need to make it impossible for him to be able to seek God. So the law of the Medes and Persians is put into place that for this space of time, the only one you can petition to is the king. Now, that's the context, that's the background that gets us to verse 10 through verse 12. That if anybody during this time seeks any God or man other than the king, he will be thrown into the lion's den. But as you begin to see what Daniel does, as you begin to see that Daniel's habit doesn't change, as you begin to see that Daniel doesn't stop praying, Daniel doesn't stop trusting in God, Daniel doesn't get scared and say, well, I can't pray for 30 days because they told me I can't or I'm going to be eaten by lions. But instead, Daniel does what he's always done. He seeks the Lord. Now, I think in looking at this, we see these five things as Daniel prays. Number one, we see boldness. Daniel could have decided to take a fast from praying. 
<laughs> Daniel could have said, well, this is going to get me in a lot of trouble. This is going to get me killed. This is going to really upset the people of this land. And after all, what's wrong with taking a, a 30-day break? What's wrong with stopping for this space of time, and then I will reconvene with the praying? Let me ask you a question. That, and we don't know when this might happen, but what if there becomes a law in our own country that says you are not allowed to pray? You're not allowed to have a Bible. You're not allowed to come to worship. You're not allowed to openly worship Christ. Are you going to say, well, that's the law? Are you going to say, well, if I do this, my family could suffer, I could suffer, I could be killed if I worship the Lord. If I'm caught praying, or if I'm caught with a Bible, or if I'm caught with doing any of these things, I could be killed. You see, we don't find Daniel doing anything he didn't already do. We find a boldness in Daniel trusting the Lord even during this time, and he continued to trust God. He continued to pray. He continued to do what he had always done. So we see a boldness there. If there's one thing that's missing within our culture, it's a boldness for the Lord. It's a boldness for God. And we see that boldness in Daniel. What else do we see in Daniel? We see a persistence, don't we? It says that he gathered there with his window open and facing Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day. He didn't just pray one time, but he continually prayed. He also intentionally prayed. It wasn't that he was just having a meal. It wasn't he was going to bed. It wasn't just a time, it was a persistence of coming before God and staying in a constant state of prayer, intentionally and continually praying before God. We see that persistence in the text. Remember from Sunday morning. Prayer is boldness, and prayer is persistence by definition. We have to be bold as we trust God, and we are persistent as we continue to trust God in our praying. A third thing we see is humility here in the text. You say, well, why do you say that? How do you see humility here in these two verses? Where is humility at in Daniel's praying? Well, let me ask you this. When Daniel is told he can't pray, when Daniel is told no petition can be made to anybody but the king, does Daniel lift his window, stick his head out the window, and do anything he didn't already ordinarily do in prayer? He doesn't say, I'm going to stick it to those people. He doesn't say, God's on my side. I'm going to take this boldness and I'm going to just rub it in their face. He doesn't stick his head out the window and, and, and raise the volume of his voice. I just want them to try to stop me. I just want them to come after me. Oh, I hope they do come. I hope they do come for me. God will take care of them. He doesn't do any of that. There's no bravado there. There's no chauvinism there. There's, there's no pride there where he would do anything that he didn't normally already do. He wasn't showboating his faith before anybody. He was simply just doing what his commitment was. He was praying. He was praying like he normally did. How easy would it be to want to do that. How easy is it for us to, when we're told we can't do something, or we're told this can't happen, or we're told we're not allowed to do this, do we want to just, just do it? Just do it. I knew a man one time that I had never seen him with a gun. 
I had never seen him talk about guns. I had never seen a desire in him to want a gun. But one day he went out and bought a gun. And I asked him, I said, why'd you buy that gun? I've never seen you with a gun. He said, because they're going to come and they're going to try to take guns and they're not going to tell me that I can't have a gun. That was his reason. (laughs) I thought, man, how silly is that? Only reason you want that is because you're told you can't have that. Daniel here wasn't throwing that in anybody's face. He was continuing to pray as he always prayed with boldness of faith, persistence to the Lord. Notice the fourth thing. We see a faith and we see a trust in God. Listen, Daniel was in a serious situation. I think sometimes when we think about the lion's den, we almost get it in our heads that when he actually was sentenced to the lion's den, he wasn't scared at all. He just walked in that den and he just said, kiddies, I'm here. I'm here now. Listen, you can take whatever you want from the text and apply your application to it, but I don't believe it quite happened that way. There was a serious situation before Daniel. And it took faith and it took trust that God was going to take care of Daniel as Daniel obeyed the Lord. So we see a faith and a trust. There's one last thing I think we see here. We see a submission to God. He submitted to God. If you you look at this again, you see that Daniel learns about this. He learns of this document that has been signed and immediately goes into his house. The windows in its upstairs room open toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, there's the persistence. He gets down on his knees and prays and gives thanks to God, just as he had done before. And then you see how the men come after him. And you see how he gets put before the king. And you see all this happens. Daniel had to know. Daniel had to understand what was probably going to happen was they were going to know. Because he wasn't hiding it. He wasn't praying quieter than he normally did. He wasn't praying louder than he normally did. He wasn't hiding it from anybody. They said this, but Daniel said, I'm going to submit to only one person. And that's going to be God. When the officials are asking me to do something that is against my faith, that is against what God is leading me to do, then I'm going to choose God. And that's the way we ought to live our lives. I know about Romans 13. I know that we are to obey the laws of the land. I know that we are to respect the governing authority. But let me tell you something. When the governing authority begins to instruct and command and tell you to do things that are contrary to what the Word of God teaches and what the Spirit of God would be leading us to do, we better pick God. And we better submit to the Lord. As Daniel submitted to the Lord, he didn't stop praying. He didn't take a vacation from prayer. He didn't say, well, it's just not a good time to pray. He continued praying praying, he continued using his life to glorify and honor God. And lastly, I know I said five, but if you want to throw a sixth thing in there, the overall tone of these two verses for our devotion tonight would scream intentional. (laughs) Daniel intentionally came before God. Daniel intentionally three times a day prayed. Daniel intentionally trusted God. Daniel intentionally spent time in prayer. And in a few moments, we're going to have this time of intentional prayer. Let me tell you something. There is no merit in me saying, Well, you need to sit here for 30 minutes and pray because that's really the time test of godliness. No. You need to have and take advantage of this intentional time of prayer and to pray 
as long as you feel led. As long as the Spirit of God is leading you to pour out your heart before the Lord, pray for the Super Sunday. Pray for Eastside Baptist Church. I'm preaching a very important message on Sunday, maybe the most important message I've ever preached from this pulpit Sunday on Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. I'd appreciate you praying for me. I'd appreciate you praying for the music of the church, the worship that we have. I'd appreciate you praying for the unity of our church, and that everybody would endeavor to seek that unity, and that we would think of ourselves as one church. I continue to just urge you to to pray And whatever the Lord lays on your heart tonight, spend that time intentionally seeking Him. We are going to go now into our time of prayer. God bless you.